Ever since Pokemon X and Y, every new Pokemon game has had a central mechanic or gimmick that defines the generation. In Pokemon X and Y, it was Mega Evolutions. In Pokemon Sun and Moon, it was Z-Moves. In Pokemon Sword and Shield, it was Dynamax. And now in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, it's Terrastalize. Terrastalize has been a controversial topic in the Smogon competitive singles community and was recently the subject of a community suspect vote. Players within certain requirements voted on two different options. One was to keep terrestrialization as is, and the other was to restrict or ban terrestrialization. The 60% majority required to take action on terrestrialization was not reached, and the mechanic was left alone. But even if the 60% majority was reached, the community did not want it banned. A restriction would have been put in place to reveal the terror types of every Pokemon before each game, much like what Nintendo's official competitive format, VGC, has done. So, the community has spoken and does not believe Terrastalize is too broken for competitive singles. A similar vote occurred in Generation 7, where the subject was Z-Moves, which were also ultimately not banned. But one of these generational mechanics stands out as by far the most broken in a competitive singles context. It was completely centralizing and resulted in one of the most unbalanced metagames we've ever seen. This mechanic was Dynamax from Gen 8. Let's take a look at why the competitive singles community decided to ban an entire generation defining mechanic and why the new mechanic of Generation 9 is not banned. Before we get into it, I'd appreciate it if you liked the video and subscribed to the channel if you're after some more informative content about competitive Pokemon singles. I've made a few videos about the Hisui Pokemon from Pokemon Legends Arceus, and those Pokemon will be available to use after the release of Pokemon Home. Check those out if you're interested. Dynamax is a mechanic that allows a Pokemon to become ginormous, once per game. When they do this, their HP stat is doubled, and they get access to a powerful new set of Dynamax moves. Every type has a preset Dynamax version of their attacks, with various new effects. For example, any water type attack will now become Max Geyser, the water type Dynamax attack. This attack has the effect of creating rain on hit. The only way to protect against them is to use Max Guard, another Dynamax move. Any non-attack move at all is converted into Max Guard upon Dynamaxing. This double HP effect and access to these Dynamax moves lasts for three turns. It's important to note that singles is not the official Game Freak endorsed format for competitive Pokemon. The official competitive format, VGC, is a doubles format, and doubles is a completely different environment where different Pokemon, strategies and options are viable. Many of the design decisions in the more recent Pokemon games have been made with the experience of competitive doubles in mind, and that includes Pokemon Sword and Shield's generational mechanic, Dynamax. In doubles, Dynamax is not broken. When there are four Pokemon on the field, one of those Pokemon becoming temporarily way stronger is not as high impact. Using your one per game resource is an important decision. If the enemy believes you're going to Dynamax your Pokemon, they can target you with both of their Pokemon, making your one per game Dynamax a complete waste. Another trait of Dynamax is that it makes you immune to flinch, which is much more relevant in doubles where Fake Out is one of the most powerful and common options. Other aspects of Dynamax, such as it bypassing Protect, and some of the Dynamax move effects buffing both you and your ally, were clearly designed with doubles in mind. They did not design Dynamax with singles in mind, and in singles, there was far less counterplay to it. Double HP and the incredibly powerful Dynamax moves that enable Pokemon to snowball out of control while being nearly unkillable, was extremely overpowered. You don't have a second Pokemon to help you weather the storm against the ginormous Gyarados that has double health and extremely powerful moves. Dealing with this is simply too much to ask for in a singles environment. Gyarados was perhaps the biggest abuser of Dynamax in the game. Dynamax turned the otherwise unremarkable move Bounce into Max Airstream which was among the strongest of the Dynamax moves. This was a move with massive base power and the secondary effect of raising your speed by one stage. Paired with Gyarados' ability Moxie, which raises your attack by one stage whenever you get a KO, Dynamax would allow you to nuke something, get a KO, 
and then raise both your attack and speed and continue to destroy everything for two more turns. Once Dynamax is over, you now have a Gyarados that just raised its speed one to three times and got a bunch of KOs which raised its attack even further. The way to handle this was to use Ditto. Once the Gyarados did all that, you could go to Ditto, transform into the Gyarados and steal all its boost, then Dynamax your Ditto to Gyarados and start hitting them with the max airstreams. This basically turned every battle into an armistice, where whoever Dynamaxed first lost because the other person would steal all their boosts and Dynamax their Ditto. This metagame centered around this one extremely overpowered interaction, was very one dimensional and unhealthy. When Dynamax was suspect tested, the majority of the community agreed to ban it from competitive singles. Many players are still upset about the banning of a generational mechanic in Gen 8, but there was no denying the negative effect this had on the competitive singles experience. The mechanic clearly was not balanced or designed with a singles environment in mind. Now here we are in Gen 9 with a new generational mechanic, Terastalize. Terastalize is a similar mechanic to Dynamax in the sense that it can be activated once per battle and at any time. Your Pokemon can have a predetermined Terra type, and when you decide to Terastalize a Pokemon, they transform into their Terra type. You remain that new type for the remainder of the game, and you also keep the same type attack bonuses of the types that you were previously. If you Terastalize into a type that you already are, for example, a Floatzel with a Water Terra type, you simply gain extra Water type damage. There's also a new move called Terra Blast that any Pokemon can learn which by default is an 80 power normal special attack. But once you Terastalize, the type of Terra Blast becomes the same as your Terra type, and it becomes either physical or special depending on your highest attacking stat. Allowing a Pokemon to change into a new type has many applications. You can resist incoming moves by becoming a type that resists whatever you were previously weak to. You can become a strong neutral defensive type to enhance a defensive Pokemon or allow yourself a turn to use a setup move. You can simply change types to increase the damage of one of your coverage options by gaining Stab, allowing you to break through a defensive Pokemon that you previously couldn't. This mechanic is extremely powerful and has introduced new ways to play and think about Pokemon. But despite its power level, the many different ways Pokemon can abuse it, and the sometimes frustrating situations it can create, the community has deemed it balanced enough to remain in competitive singles. Unlike Dynamax, there is counterplay to Terastalize in a singles environment. Now that the meta has settled a bit and people are more used to the mechanic, we've gotten a better sense of what every Pokemon's preferred Terra type is and in what situations they might use it. When to use Terastalize is a more nuanced thing compared to when to use Dynamax. There are multiple different ways to use your one per game Terastalize to gain value, and it's up to you to decide how to use it to get the most out of it and how to respond to your opponent's usage of it as well. Dynamax improved the power of a Pokemon in a much more one-dimensional way. There weren't really a wide variety of ways to use it in singles. There was one extremely powerful way to use it that the game completely centered around. Terastalize is still a controversial issue in the community. It's completely changed the way we look at the game and added another layer to think about. However you feel about it, there's no denying that it is a much better mechanic than Dynamax in a competitive singles context, with a lot more to offer. Terastalize may get retested in the future. Pokemon Home will be releasing and bringing a much wider variety of Pokemon back into the metagame who could potentially abuse the mechanic. Once this happens, the metagame is going to look completely different. But what we do know for sure is that the majority of the community does not want to ban the generational mechanic unless absolutely necessary for the health of the competitive experience. Dynamax was an outlier among the generational mechanics that was too much to handle, but Terastalize is here to stay, at least for now. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button down below. Subscribe to the channel for more Gen 9 gameplay, discussion, and informative content. Thank you to the patrons. If you'd like to see a team that you built feature in one of my videos, or request a video topic for me to cover, Take a look at my Patreon link in the description for more information. The money got different Cause of what I'm spending The money got different Oh, it's Magneton! Cause of what I'm spending Whoa, the money got by different. one hit It's Scatman!
rather fight. The money got big, big. Cause of what I'm spending. 